the the cow is not going to attack any of the rest of you because I feel like the cow is actually potentially a party wipe waiting to happen. Happy birthday! <laughs> God damn it. I had us on Friday the 13th, but... It's not my birthday, uh, but hello. Prove it. Pro I'm prove it? What? <laughs> Hang on, have I got my passport here? <laughs> Wait, no, I shouldn't be displaying that on stream, I feel. That's probably a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> Thirsty Black's trying to get Nick to dox himself. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Truly the first episode of the evil campaign. Yeah, you, you're really all getting into it. Um, so let me let me set a bit of a scene for this. Um, and well, actually, first of all, let me explain the, the premise to people who, who, are, who are watching. The idea is each of these fine people who I will stop calling fine people the moment they start pissing me off, which will be about 10 minutes or so. Um, and it's actually probably negative 20 seconds. Uh, anyway, each of these fine people... Have... Wait, 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 wait. Ten minutes in the future or in the past? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Each of these fine people have made four characters. They are all level zero, they all have four hit points, and they are they have no class features or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> they've rolled some some stats uh, using the standard D D forty six drop lowest in whatever order they prefer, and they are going to be put through a bit of a meat grinder. And the idea is that, theoretically, if everything's gone all right, they'll have one character each at the end, if everything's gone all right. If not, then their next character, which will be at level one, will uh, will be 46 rolled in order, and they, they keep whatever they get. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if they can survive, because I've done something very evil here at the Grave of Ouchie. Um, which is a budget Tomb of Annihilation. Now, <laughs> which is, yeah, it's well known for being a bastard. And I'm a bastard, so it's a good fit. So, I think, first of all, we should get a, a brief introduction of the characters. And I mean brief, because I've told you all explicitly not to do too much of a backstory. But so, like, a name and a description is good enough. Um... And it doesn't even have to be that much from each of you. And we'll start in the top left, which is Iris. It's always fine with me. Yeah. Okay, uh, my, my four characters in order are... Belladonna, Belladonna Promade, a rabbit folk uh, wizard who, who has chosen not to use magic for whatever reason during this trial. <laughs> Who 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 want, who tried to make a deal with a demon and instead made an impossible bet. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Derenix. He is a he was a cleric for uh, Marion until he was banished for the church. Okay. Because he he worshipped Mar Marion for the his aspect of death, but not the life aspect. He does. He still. He still does have his powers. Marion has not abandoned him. Okay. Then, we have a returning character. We have Neil, the Kobold, who, after his last embarrassing death, has decided to find a new outlook in life, to gain power, and then return for revenge. <laughs> And then finally, we have probably my favorite character here. We have the the cursed crew of an old pirate ship by the name of the Void Kieran. The crew is trapped in a skeletal bot in a body that's made of a skeleton and broken off bits of the ship that they all sank in. All six of them share this body and are cursed to forever walk the world until their ship sails again. I love that one. Yeah. Um, this, this is a Warforged, technically, but... <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the only Warforged I will probably ever allow, uh, because it was so cool. I was like, yeah, no, i got to have that. Um, okay, over the top right, we have Bree. Tell us about your characters. With a mouthful of food. <laughs> we'll go bottom left <laughs> to, to Leggy. Tell us about your characters. <laughs> 
we have Pebble, the uh, gnome who wants to just take over a city. <laughs> Their Yuan T psychic brink. Mm -hmm. A magpie faced Kenku named Shinies. Or at least we think this thing. And a uh, lizard folk who has no real name, so they just decide to call it the Shedder. The Shedder, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Alright, over to Bree. Your four characters. Yep, second evil act of the stream, um, eating when well, it should have been my turn, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Okay, we have Mediocre, the tiefling barbarian, well, not yet barbarian, no enrageaholic, always looking for an excuse to fight over her, um, lack, her mediocre stats. We have um, Blake, aspiring warlock, who just wants to acquire power and unleash it on as many destructible or innocent targets as they can find. Uh, we have, well, don't actually know if they have a name, but they are a clown slash mime, an elven bard. <laughs> Terrifying. No, they shouldn't have a name. Mm. And last but not least, we have the Strangler, <laughs> history's worst serial killer. They <laughs> insist on uh, using their, uh, struggling people as their MO, and uh, to date have claimed zero people, but managed to get themselves Ran out of several towns. That's amazing. Half of them actually, half of them actually realised they were attempting to kill people. <laughs> okay, so those are all twelve characters, and by the end of this, hopefully, only four will survive. So, um, I, I love that you've all come up with some very interesting characters, and I'm going to be very upset to kill them. Um, not that upset uh, that I don't do it, though. <laughs> So, let's get started. You are all in pitch blackness that suddenly resolves to a pinprick of light that widens around you and drops you unceremoniously uh, into the dirt in a small village in what appears to be essentially nowhere. The middle of nowhere entirely. In fact, you look up and there's a sign and thankfully it's written in common and you understand it uh, and it says nowhere. And... There's this, there's, yeah, a small village in the distance. It looks to be about a quarter of a mile away. And otherwise, you're just surrounded by cows. Smell like gnolls. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's the cow shit you're smelling at the moment. <laughs> it's, it's easy to mistake. Okay. okay. Mediocre immediately starts eyeing up a cow, waiting for it to move a bit towards her a bit too quickly. Okay, okay. So they, they are just sort of... They're milling around, just grazing, really, just chewing cud and, and and eating a bit of eating a bit of grass. One of them is walking slightly towards you. Is that enough <laughs> to set mediocre off? You start him, giving me the bull. Excuse me while I look up the stat block for a cow. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, basically, if they move any, if they move us, if they keep moving in that direction, media is probably going to take that as a threat. Okay, you hear a or sort at least of a snort sighting. and a uh, stamp of a foot on the ground. M Milks, while this is going on, Milks is petting one of the cows, whispering to it, "Soon your cheese will be mine." <laughs> okay, roll me animal handling, please. Um, and yeah, uh, mediocre. There is a cow. Yeah, clawing, uh, well not clawing, but stamping at the at the dirt, there's fresh uh, fresh snot coming out of its nostrils as it's snorting away, and it looks a bit upset. It looks like it's detected your hostility. Okay. Wait, let me just double check what the folk hero get. Yeah, because she has got the folk hero background, because apparently she got angry with someone who everyone didn't like. Uh, 13 for animal handling. 13, you're fine. You're not being kicked into the dirt and being the first death of the stream. <laughs> Milks likes animals. Mm. Uh -huh. and, and they like you, apparently. So you're good. Yeah, you, you've made a friend of a cow. Um, meanwhile, we're making an enemy of a cow. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it looks angry. You've got a few seconds, probably. Okay, so... Uh, mediocre takes a swing of it with her fists. Okay, gonna punch a cow. All right. Uh, well, roll me initiative then. Uh, <laughs> All of us, or just mediocre? Just mediocre for now, I think. Milk's Otherwise, just burning in this. Otherwise, it'll be like 
12 people rolling initiative. But if yeah, if, if anyone who wants to join the fight absolutely can. Uh, and can, can roll oh, initiative. Wait, uh, do, do, do be warned, uh, Getter is looking at this with a bit of gruel coming out of their uh, mouth. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Dirty 20. A Dirty 20. Okay, well, uh, the cow rolled two. Uh, that is... A uh, natural 20 plus 1, so 21. 21. Okay, so Nilks is going to go first. Then we're going to have Mediocre, and then we're going to have a cow. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to rule everyone as being surprised except Mediocre. Because I, this surprised me as well. So, realistically, you're up first, uh, Mediocre. Okay, so Actually, she... before any of this happens, I can, I just like going forward, I can assume that the normal rules of no player PvP are off the board here. They are off the board here, yes. In fact, we'll be giving gotcha. courage later. <laughs> okay, also just to confirm, we've only got equipment from our backgrounds, not any uh, classes we might be planning to take. Uh, yeah, no class equipment yet. Yeah. Um, okay. But I will be giving you all a bit of money in a minute when you hit the town. Okay, well, but for now, Mediocre is unarmed, so she's just going to punch a cow. Okay, yeah, roll the attack, roll the attack. I've got the AC of a cow here. Uh, we're ready. I'll go into the combat okay. music. Here we go. I can't actually hear the combat music, but I assume it sounds great. It does. Okay. It's, it's banging. Yeah, it's megalovania. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's strength plus one, is it not? Yeah, does uh, yeah, no um, proficiency. So they, does a ten hit? Yes. It's a cow. It's not wearing <laughs> armor. <laughs> I mean, it could be. It'd be a real Although, surprise if I well, turned I around and said it was in full play. Can take a fair bit of a beating before they realize they're being hit. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of hit points. Um, yeah. Okay. So roll damage. Yeah, you you punch it right okay. in the face. <laughs> uh, do you roll damage for unarmed strikes? Uh, for an unarmed strike, it is one plus your strength modifier. Unless you have a feat that gives you more than that. Yeah, so that's going to be... Uh, two. Two damage. Okay. Cool. Well, then we get to the top of the round, which is uh, Nilks first. Nilks the Kobold sees this and is immediately offended and jumps at Mediocre and bites at Mediocre's throat. Okay. Uh, we're going to roll that as an unarmed strike as well. Uh, so it's going to count the same. Uh, but obviously with only four hit points, that is a lot more damage that you'd be doing anyway. So yeah, roll your attack. Uh, does an unnatural 20 hit? I'm going to assume yes. Although it's your AC, not... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... No armor, so that's a baseline of 10, plus dexterity modifier, that's plus, yeah, so that's 11, yeah. <laughs> yep, you hit, okay, so 1 plus your strength modifier. A... Yeah, that is 3 damage as a very angry kobold is now biting at your throat. <laughs> Mediocre is now at 1 quarter health. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. Cool, it's the cow's no, no, go. No, no. Milk's made friend with cow. No, it's not the cow's go. Sorry, it's um, it's mediocre again. Medi oh, um, because you had the surprise. So, mediocre is both ecstatic and furious because yeah, she likes to get into fights. Hence, why she was being belligerent towards the cow. Mm. Okay, what I think I'll do is I'll try and. I'm assuming I'm significantly larger than said kobold, being a tiefling. Yeah. So I'm Oops. just going to grab the uh, kobold by the throat, or try gr try to grab the kobold by the throat, and hop, and just um, hold them in front of myself. Okay, so yeah, roll a, a grapple. So that's going to be your athletics versus acrobatics or athletics for no. Okay, you don't have proficiency in acrobatic. I mean athletics, so that's just going to be a plus one. What size is Nilks? Is Nilks small or tiny? Small. Okay, that, that's fine. Kobold that's, is small. Yeah, it, it's if there's two size difference, I think you get advantage, but um, that'll just be a one size difference. Uh, that is an 18. Wow. Some good rolls uh, for Nilks. 
Uh, that's a 10, so... Just too fast, just too fast. That is a speedy kobold. Um, all right, now it's the cow. Uh, the cow is not able to charge you, which is lucky. <laughs> so it is instead going to going to gore you. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> that's a natural twenty. <laughs> well, okay, we're well, off to a great start. So that is a dead mediocre, I'm afraid. You were on three quarters self. Any hit was gonna was was gonna do it, and that that was a crit. So yeah, okay, mediocre down. Is, is, okay, <laughs> opportunist uh, better is going to walk up. Cut off one of the legs and just walk off doing on it. <laughs> okay. Actually, I, never mind. I was about to ask if this, if it was just dead or in the uh, in the death saving throws. Uh, with the amount of damage that would have been dealt. Uh, you know what? Let let me roll it. There's always. No, it would it would be massive damage actually. Yeah, yeah because anything over two would be massive damage, wouldn't it? Uh, anything over four, because you're going to get your, your thing, but it's right. 2d6 plus four damage uh, for the cow. Oh, four straight up. They're, so. they're strong. Yeah, yeah. you, you oh, got yeah, a heavy no, That's hit. a guaranteed death. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm afraid, yeah, that one's, that one's dead. But that's fine. You've got three more. And <laughs> this really does set the scene, which is great, because you've yet to enter the thing that is a budget Tomb of Annihilation. Or even the village before the budget Tomb of Annihilation. Um, but importantly, of course, um, you know, snacks have been procured. <laughs> For the record, Blake is um, uh, Blake's st standing by, and they really enjoyed watching that. Oh, good. The, the cow is not going to attack any of the rest of you, because I feel like the cow is actually potentially a party wipe waiting to happen. <laughs> Nilks is petting the cow. Okay, roll me animal handling. <laughs> okay, uh, this is going on pebbles and uh, oh god, I have to name it down. Fifteen. It. Fifteen. Yeah, you you soothe the cow perfectly. The, the cow was like stomping and all that, but no, you soothe it down. You soothe it down fine. What is it with Iris's characters and soothing like bovine creatures? It's it's it's, it's happened a lot now. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Pebbles and Brink are heading towards the town. You're heading towards the town with Pebbles and Brink. Um, are you heading towards the town with your other two characters as well, or are you leaving them behind? They will start to follow. They'll start to follow, okay. Um, what about the rest of you? Uh, Be yeah. Belladonna uh, and Darix are also following. The crew of the Void Kirin will follow after picking up Nyx and carrying Nyx along over their shoulder. Okay, okay. And um, oh, Blake stops to just enjoy the uh, carnage for a bit longer, while um, the strangler and the uh, unnamed clown mime slash mime just shrug and walk on. Okay. Well, you reach the you reach the village of nowhere, and stood outside of the first building you see is a man leaning against a fence post. He's got a bit of straw in his teeth. Uh, and he's got, you know, a straw hat on as well, and he looks at you and goes, All right, you here for the grave? Most people's here for the grave. Got a whole industry around it, in fact. I make, uh, I make coffins. You interested? If you're going in, I do a good deal on coffins. Belladonna steps forward and asks, uh, What grave are you talking about? Oh, the grave? The grave of Ouchie. You ever heard of it? It's famous. Famous at least as far as five miles down the road at, at Two Pots. Two Pots, they've heard of it. Over in Shepton Mallet, they've heard of it. Over in Bishop's Carlisle, they've even heard of it. And I, you know, I've never even been there. My entire life spent in this village, mostly. Apart from that one time when I got very drunk. <laughs> the crew the crew of the Void Kieran steps forward. The flames that are inside its body are currently pink. And okay. what be the, uh, a female voice coming out? And what be the reward of said tomb? Why is it so famous? Oh, well, it's famous because no one can get, get in there. We don't really know what's in there. 
best I've seen someone got the, the second room in. Don't know what's at the end. Maybe nothing. Maybe a load of treasure, but you'd be famous for having beaten it. Loads of people come. Treasure? Oh, yeah, probably a load of treasure. First room, I remember, had at least 100 gold pieces, probably two. That got claimed a while back, of course, but there's plenty more in the other rooms. I'm sure of it. I mean, I've never been in there because everyone dies. But, you know, I'm sure there is. It's got to be. Pebble says this is a perfect way to try and get famous and overtake a city. Pebble is in. <laughs> Perhaps, De uh, De Derek speaking. Perhaps this is a way to gain some power. Me and my followers are going to need it in the coming days. Oh, for sure. Probably magic items of all kinds. You know, adventurers love them. But, you know, just a few things you'll probably want beforehand. Just a little thing. You're probably going to want a grave just ahead of time. It's a bit cheaper that way. Unless, of course, you know, you got family who are happy to spend for it. But, you know, you'll want your burial early because otherwise, I don't know, adventurers, they tend to come back as ghosts. It ain't great or revenants. And then we have to clean them up and then we send the bill to your families and it puts them in the poor house. You don't want that. So you just want to put down just two gold pieces. That'll get you a grave. We'll get you a lovely coffin. We do, an, we do an advanced service if you want a special one, which is where we put you in the boat, put you on the river, and then, you know, bow and arrow, bit of fire, lovely. But, you know, that does cost extra. That's five gold pieces. That will not be necessary. My crew is a boat. Just set us down the river. And then light us a flame. Well, that'll still be five gold pieces, even if you brought your own boat, I'm afraid. A rip off the it, that is. Well, it ain't, it ain't, you know, it's elf and safety, you see. We've got to put you in a boat that is regulation. Regulation boat, you see. So we'll be putting you, a boat, in another boat and then setting it on fire. It's just got to be done that way. I will not be paying for this service. Just leave my body where it lies. Well, fair enough. If you have a bit of money, though, I reckon you should go and talk to Long Stanley over in Long Stanley. Now, what he does is all your sorts of adventurer's gear, you know, the kind you might need. Things like rope, big poles, that sort of thing. Adventurers are always buying big poles, 10 feet long. They keep asking for it. Don't know why, but they want a big pole. We can get you one at Long Stanley's. That's actually what the name's from, you see, is how long the poles are. Uh, so do check him out. And in your pockets, you do find uh, combined for each player, because I can't be asked to meet out like amounts to individual characters. Each player has 15 gold pieces to spend. I'm guessing this is on top of our background money. Yes, this is on top of background gold. I'm just going to open a reference. Probably actually. Uh, for the record, the strangler probably um, took the gold off. Um, mediocre's body yeah that makes sense <laughs> spot of looting doesn't go amiss yeah, I suppose we should probably try just... to figure out my gold because it's just it's going to be clubs all round <laughs> fair enough you, you'll be able to afford clubs clubs are cheap um, I mean failing that improvised weapon is club okay what would you like to buy okay can I get a dagger for Blake mm-hmm Absolutely. Absolutely, you can have a dagger. Um, the amount of money is is kind of vague. I'm just looking at things and going, can you afford that? Sure. You can't, for example, have a hand crossbow with that money, but a dagger's pretty damn cheap. So yeah, you can have one of them. It um, doesn't have to add up exactly, is what I mean there. Okay. The Strangler will take a sap. Mm-hmm. And the evil clown slash mime will uh, have a short sword. All right, that sounds good. Okay, so I'm just kind of pooling my money over together from all my characters mm -hmm. just to make this simpler for me. I'm going to need one quarter staff for our Belladonna. Okay, we got that. Two, da two daggers for Nilks. One dagger for uh, Darix. Mm-hmm. And finally, a, uh, yeah, there it is, a scimitar for uh, the crew of the Void, Kieran. 
Okay, that sounds great. Good good choice as well for, for the pirate ship. You've got to have a scimitar, um, which is the closest to a cutlass as you can get in D&D. &D, Actually, a, a scimitar, a whip, because I realized I have that, and a spear, all three of them for Void Kieran. Okay, that should still be in your money, so that's, that's all good. Um, okay, with that done, um, you, yeah, you, you, you do all your trades. You've got all your items now. Um, and all that's left really is is to head on to to the grave of Ouchies. Now it's up a small hill. There are there are signs everywhere. This is the tourist trap, uh, literally the tourist trap. And uh, all the signs point up a little hill. And there's an old woman by the road, sort of waiting and guiding people up. You know, there, there are crowds heading up there already. None of them look like adventurers. They're more people who just want to see it from the outside by a postcard that says, I went to the grave of Ouchies and all I got was this piece of card. Um, <laughs> but as you pass, the old woman says, Hello. Care for any uh, any magical potions? You see, I make my own. I make my own. And I know you are no your adventurers. You've got that look. And that look is weapons. And absolutely... I have something. It's special. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a potion of minor healing. All right. It's real good. It'll heal you two whole hit points. I don't really know what those are, but I was told that they're important. Uh, uh, Belladon steps forward. And what would be the cost of these potions? Five gold pieces each. Yeah, I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money on <laughs> weapons. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, uh, what would you say the cost for three clubs would be? Three clubs. Clubs are extremely cheap. They are possibly the cheapest weapon. So, uh, hmm, probably one gold piece for the lot of it. Um, okay. Let me just In double check. Case. Oh, yeah, I'm looking in the wrong area. A, for a club is a silver piece each. <laughs> oh, it's even cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So clubs are, clubs are cheap as fuck. Like, daggers are one gold piece to, well, two... To, one to two gold pieces each, but yeah, clubs are silver because it's just a bit of wood. Quarter stuffs are cheap as well, if, if I remember. In which case, I will take eight. You'll take eight. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that'll help. That'll really help. Um, yeah. So, absolutely. While okay, this, I'll just I'll just divvy that up between. Mm. While this transaction's happening, Nilks. Be, being small and evil is going to try to pocket a few. Okay, roll me a sleight of hand check, please. And I will roll... Sleight of hand. Perception. Hmm. Okay. Before this ha before I tell you the number, is the door to the tomb open? Uh, yes, it is. It's sort of like... A, it's kind of like, um... It's, it's a mound of dirt, a hill, a, a small hill with like an open sort of cave at the center, at, at the center. Um, okay, that's a, that is a 14 total. Well, that's good because I rolled a 13. So yes, you've managed to get, I'm going to say two, you've managed to grab. <laughs> uh, Blake turns to the um, old lady and says, well, do you know who I am? An adventurer, I'd guess? Listen, my, if my family here, I have to pay full price for a potion, something as simple as a potion. And, Do you and really want to find out what's will happen? Who, who are your family? Well, I'm not actually supposed to use my, use the family name anymore. They actually threatened to do something rather unpleasant if I associated myself with them. Sounds like they're not going to be a problem then, are they? <laughs> and they just sort of pull out their dagger and say, ooh, ooh, ooh. I am a problem. That you are. That you are. Okay. Okay. What can I get you for there? I'll take one each, please. <laughs> okay. I'm going to reach over and grab three, because there's only three of you left, three potions of minor elim. I will not be trying them myself first, and these best be the genuine article. Am I clear? Oh, they're absolutely potions of minor healing. Good. And then, uh, sort of very sarcastically, they hand over a single gold piece. Thank you. 
kindly. You bastard. <laughs> The, by the way, the moment, the moment, uh, what was the character's name? I'm sorry. Uh, Blake. The moment Blake pulled out a dagger, the, re the rest of my characters outside of Nilks, who was still trying to rob the lady, like backed away. They didn't want, <laughs> they were not associated. <laughs> like, whoa, they're not with us. <laughs> um, oh, and um, another fourth, uh, another eight for these fine people. Oh, okay. I'll just have to get a few more from under the under the desk, uh, and you can see there's only like three on the on the on the table. So she ducks down under and starts picking up bottles. You can hear it clanking, um, and then uh, she reaches up to the underside of uh, her her little counter thing, and um, suddenly you hear a sound a bit like whoop 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 coming from the uh, coming from the stand. Um, and everyone in the village turns to look at you. Like, this sound is go is going for pretty much a mile. Um, and someone shouts, Here! Call the constable! And, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming over to have a look, but they're sort of keeping a distance, because, you know, scary. Um, but you can see in the distance a small plume of dust as a horse, and presumably someone on the horse, approaches. Milks has been seen! Milks, Milks throws the table to the side and dashes for, for, the, for the tomb. Okay, you dash through the, for the tomb, you run past the, uh, the outhouse that's next to it with a sign on it saying last chance to pee um, before your certain death and you run straight into the tomb. Okay, so you end up in... Um, it's not dark, there's, there's light, there's actually lit torches. They keep this room clean. Uh, and and clear. This was the first room ever cleared out, and you're in there, and it's safe. But there's a door at the end, and that's where the safety ends. And there are a load of signs saying, "Warning: Keep out unless you're an adventurer." In which case, have we sold you a funeral casket yet? Um, and uh, yeah, you're you're in. You're you're fine. What is everyone else doing? Okay, it's so, uh, I think uh, Shedder is going to try and follow their next <clears throat> meal. <laughs> uh, Pebble's going to get out of here because they don't want to deal with the constabulary. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to say Shiny's going to just follow just because chance of treasure. Belladonna and Darius are following the, the crowd. The void of the crew of the void here, and I assume this whole time is just talking with random people. Okay, yeah. Okay, Blake and the Strangler basically run at the first sign of trouble, so they're running in as well. Okay. The um, the evil mimes just like, <laughs> but then nonetheless runs after. <laughs> okay, so everyone has entered the grave of Ouchie, and as, as I say, you're all in an antechamber. There's nothing dangerous in this particular room, but there are plenty of warnings saying do not go any further unless you're an adventurer. In which case, I sure hope you've you've bought grave insurance. Milk should have bought the grave insurance. <laughs> Are you proceeding into the first room of the tomb? The first tomb room? Might as well. Mm -hmm. Tomb it might concern. <laughs> so what we're gonna what what we're gonna do for this, because there's a lot of characters and rooms are not usually that large. Uh, you can choose who goes in. You can choose everyone if you want. But bear in mind, you are increasing the risk of having every single one of your characters die as whatever I've put in there is like rocks fall, everyone dies or something like that. So it can often be a good idea to send your least preferred character first, um, which is how these things work. You know, as you start playing these characters, you'll, you'll get a feel for which ones you like the most and which ones you like the least. Send those in as cannon fodder, basically, and then work out what you've got and deal with it with the remaining characters. At minimum, the crew of the Void Curin is no coward. Okay. They are they are pirates and adventurers. They're going in. Okay. Uh, who who's going who's going with? Uh, Blake's probably going. going to ask, uh, Brink to go forward to try and make sure it's safe for them. Okay. So we got the Void Karen, Brink, and did you say Blake? Void Curin. 
Kieran, not Karen. Yeah. I keep yeah. my brain keeps going the Karen though. And Kieran, like, <laughs> as in the celestial creature. I would like to. I would like to see the manager. I would like to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Avoid mimes. Uh, okay. Yeah, the mimes too sensible. The stranglers too cowardly. So Blake's going in eager for more power. Okay, Blake, the Void Kieran, and uh, who was it on yours? It wasn't Pebble. Brink. Brink. Okay. Also, uh, Darenix is going in as well. All right, and Darenix as well. Okay, that sounds great. So you open the door, and inside it is light enough still. Um, and the, so the first things you see are that the floor is covered in a film of oil. Okay, and this room is, it's about uh, 60 feet across. And the walls around you are covered in something. It is brown and fuzzy uh, all around you. I don't trust this. Okay. I see so no here. The first thing uh, Blake's going to do is they have the um, Eldritch Adept feet, um, which, and for that, I've, d I've basically picked for them um, Eldritch Sight, which is basically um, to take magic anytime, so I'll use that. Okay, so there is on the floor in front of you an arcane sigil. There is also on the door at the end an arcane sigil. Now, you get to... It's essentially to take magic, so you get the, the School of Magic, um, the School of Magic on the Arcane Sigil at your feet is, uh, it will be Transmutation, I believe? I'd have to double check, but something like that. And the one on the door is absolutely Evocation. Transmutation, eh? So, uh... Might be Abjuration. I'm not 100%. No, Abjuration's Shields. Probably Transmutation. <laughs> We can double check once you let us know what the spell effect is. There is not a spell. <laughs> I've just okay. made something up and it's a trigger for a trap that's magical. Okay, can uh, Blake um, sort of do anything to learn a bit more about the uh, nearest signal? Uh, you can do an arcana check if you'd like. Okay, I'll do that. Do they have proficiency in arcana? No, they don't. Oh, uh... <clears throat> What does Arcana run off? Wisdom or intelligence? Inte uh, Arcana oh. is intelligence. Ah, oh, yeah, that's plus two then. Okay, while they're rolling, uh, just double checking. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance to back out of the room just enough that uh, anything done to the floor won't affect? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could currently the door behind you is is wide open, um, and yeah, you can just step out. Yep, uh, that's sixteen. 16. Okay, so you know that uh, the arcane sigil there is waiting for anyone to pass. It is not waiting for people to step on it. It is waiting for them to pass at all. You physically cannot not trigger the trap, basically. Uh, and um, you can't tell what it'll do, though. Okay, Blake turns to the other two who've, uh, who's, who've been following them and says, So, this uh, sigil, I've seen something like it. I think if someone were to pass over it quickly enough, it wouldn't affect them. Okay, uh, who are you trying to convince okay, and roll which, persuasion on that? <laughs> no, no, no need, oh, no, no need. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, there's definitely no need, because uh, Brink, on hearing this, is going to pick up Blake and throw them over the sigil. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to need a way, grapple check on that one, contested it by Blake. While this is all mm -hmm. happening, r r roughly, if it if it does succeed around the same time, Blake would be going over. Uh, the crew of the Void Kieran are no cowards, and they're just mo and they're just going to bolt for it. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> we'll get the we'll get the roll for the throw, and if it's successful, the Void Kieran's going in at the same time. If not, it's Void Kieran on their own, uh, going over the threshold. Um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be athletics from Brink and acrobatics or athletics from, um, God, names are hard. There's 12 of them. Blake. Blake, that's it. My brain was like, Brett. <laughs> like, no, it's not some college freshman from California who <laughs> really likes longboarding. It's <laughs> um, and that's uh, nine, so I'm going... 
because I guess this yeah, is you're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So his uh was a nineteen. So Brink casts power word yeet. And <laughs> Blake's going over, but at the same time the Void Kieran bolts for it. Uh, and the two of you cross the threshold and a magical sigil triggers and that closes the doors behind you. Uh, so there's only there's only there, the Void there is Kieran. A why I did ask uh, beforehand. Mm. Brink has stepped backwards and was stepped. Uh, yeah, I assumed the everyone is out except the ones bolting forwards, basically. Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, and and now you can hear a sort of grinding sound from coming I think from the walls. Eric will still be in the room. Okay. Well, in that case, yeah, they can still be in the room. That's that's fine. If any of your characters want to be in the room as the, the trap triggers, I'm not going to stop you. So yeah, there's a door at the end, which, you know, uh, and the, the floor is a little slippery and full of oil. There's something fuzzy and brown on the walls that you don't know what it is, and the walls appear to be doing something. There's a grinding noise going on. Um, in fact, actually, yeah, you can probably notice it because it's reasonably right. That, those walls are coming in. <laughs> They're coming in slowly, but they're coming in. You've probably got mm, 10, 20 seconds before you're Okay, do I uh, see uh, something that might disable, might switch off the trap? No. Damn. Is the door on the other side open? It is not open, no. Okay, well, this is the door I um, saw also had something on it. Uh, can I take a closer look at that door without getting too close? Sure, you can you can get a bit closer to it, obviously, without any issues. Um, and it looks it looks to be like a door. Roll me a perception check. Right, I'm a proficient in perception. I think the crew of the the yes. crew of the Void Kieran sees the walls closing in, and they take it as a challenge. Corda master, deal with the wall. Suddenly, the pink flames turn blue. And, and and a male voice comes out. I cast it. He pulls out. He pulls out the scimitar and starts attacking one of the walls, closing in. So, just slashing at the walls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's your question? Um, is that uh, is our is our uh, proficiency bonus just two? Yes, your proficiency yeah, bonus. Okay. Um, so you're slashing at the wall. With the scimitar, it's not really doing anything, but I I appreciate the hustle. Um, you are sort of lopping off tiny chunks of this fuzz as well, but there's so much of it that it's going to. It, it would probably take closer to like a week to cut it all off. Okay, hey, uh, that's um, a twenty-one I've rolled then. A twenty-one. Okay, so you can tell that the door is. Um, I was going to say, like, originally when I wrote this, the door was fake, but I've realized I never wrote an actual exit. So, yeah, no, it's a real door. It's all fine. <laughs> I wrote a fake door when we were planning this, and we've never written a real door on this chat room. <laughs> so, yeah, no, this is this is this is a perfectly real door. It's all fine. OK, on the one hand, 21 perception would suggest that that's actually true, but on the other hand, I don't trust this anymore. <laughs> You know what? Staying in character, Blake just dives through, tries to dive through. Dive through. Okay, you open the door, and you bolt through into a new antechamber. You, you are safe. No one else is, <laughs> because when you, the moment you touch it, it triggers that arcane sigil Hello. that was spotted, and it casts the most deadly spell, produce flame, and it produces flame on the oil on the floor, and it goes whoomph and spreads across to all of you. Uh, it is going to deal um, half damage to the two of you in the room. So, two damage. However, the fire then hits this brown fuzz that is on the walls. And it's... You know what? Can I get a nature check, please, from the two of you? That are, uh, the three of you that are still in the room, sorry. I think it's only two of us, and both of them are me. No, because... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, of course. No, no, yeah, no, because... That, that, yeah. that is a 17 from Darius and a 2 from the Void Kieran. Okay, the 17 will be enough. Um, 
now that you're seeing this come in, you just have this brief epiphany, and you're like, I don't know what this is. This is brown mold. What brown mold does when fire hits it is it spreads extremely quickly. It is endothermic. It, it absorbs all the fire and then goes whoomph over you. So it immediately carpets the floor um, and it is coming towards uh, coming towards both of your characters. Um, and yeah, it's it's covering every every surface and the fire is getting immediately like burnt out but okay so this is a bad situation hmm. the crew of the void kirin is going to attempt to dash out the door the one behind you or the one ahead the one ahead to the next room okay make me an athletics check um this is basically going to be are you fast enough to beat the mold as it comes towards you yeah. uh does void kirin have athletics you said Yes, athletics. Void Kieran does have athletics. Okay, that is a 21. That's enough. You're through. Very well done. I, I literally needed a 20 to beat the brown mole because this thing is fast. Um, and yeah. Darix, who is much further back in the room, closer to the old door, is going to panic and attempt to cast a Word of Radiance on the brown mole. Okay, and that's radiant damage, isn't it? It's not fire. Yes, it's uh, succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant. Okay, uh, I'm going to assume that the mold is going to fail, uh, so it's going to take 1d6 radiant. Um, it is not something that has a stat block, so I'm just going to say it I is still going. I will going. say this, this is all creatures I can see, so all mold Darius can see takes 1d6 radiant. <laughs> Yeah, uh, unfortunately, this isn't a creature. Yeah. It's in a special part of the DMG called Hazards. And, um, yeah, uh, it probably stops enough of it. It slows it, but it's still coming. Um, so I'm going to say you have, essentially, one more action you can do before it hits. Uh, then Derek is bolting. Okay, an athletics check, please. And it's sort of climbing around the walls towards you. That is a 12 that is not going to be enough, I'm afraid. So the, the brown mold hits, and what the brown mold normally does is 3d6 cold, uh, cold damage. Uh, what it does here is one quarter cold damage. Yeah, brown mold's terrifying. It's one of the classic D&D &D, uh, frets. And yeah, it, it, it is basically there to turn off fireball when that, because <laughs> like, the moment that happens, everyone dies. Um, yeah, so it hits, and I'm afraid that is very, very quickly killed frozen uh frozen creature and then the doors open again so the problem the yeah. rest of the characters have is the floor is now covered in this mold <laughs> you know that, that's really a shame because Derek's i picked spare the dying for Derek's. <laughs> could spare everyone else from dying but couldn't spare themselves uh, goodbye, Darius. None of you brought, like, rope or, um, ten-foot poles, Even did you? Even if we had a bro rope, how the hell would we get across the room? Alright. Lasso, throw it across to someone else, get them to tie it up, you know, stuff like that. Bored of you to uh, uh, Stephen Blake with uh, 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 alive over there, so... That is wrong, actually. The crew of the Void Kirin does have 50 foot of silk rope. Oh, well, alright then. You. <laughs> Thank you, sailor slash pirate background. <laughs> so yeah, oh, how are you going to get the rest of the characters yeah, no, across? Or means, are you going to get means the rest I've got of the silk rope as well? Oh. In that case, I'm going to... The crew of the Void Kirin is going to... I like a stone or something to one end of the rope, so it's easier to throw across. Okay. And then have probably someone on the other end tie it. Sure. I think that's going to be all fine. I think with the distance throwing a stone for the Voikirin, because it's made of wood, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm not going to ask for a roll on that, um, because I think it's going to I think it's going to make it across. Uh, if you were just throwing the rope, that would be a problem, but attaching a stone to it gives a bit of weight to it. That, yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Um, yeah, you lot can just tie that up to something and essentially crawl across on the rope as it's surrounded by this brown mold. 
against Thunder Commando Crawl. Mm. Okay. Uh, interesting question. Just for the fun of it, who is going to be the last person across the rope? I'll, I'll leave that to you lot to decide. <laughs> I'm going to say it's probably going to be the Strangler because, as I previously stated, they are very cowardly. <laughs> mm. I'll, I'll accept that. Okay, so as the stragglers coming across the rope, Bell- Belladonna, my my rabbit folk here, she she does not want to share much of the reward. She's going to cut the rope about halfway, as you're about halfway across. Okay. You are you are okay. Tell you what, <clears throat> strangler. Uh, can I have a dexterity saving throw for whether you are quick enough to spot this um, and try and do something about it? Okay. Uh, we don't get any uh, saving throw proficiencies, do we? Because they're, yeah. They're nope, they're tied to classes. Yep, so that's just going to be a straight dexterity bonus plus two. I mean, you, you save that. I, I do get some bonuses to uh, some of the saving rolls on some of my characters. Oh, neat. Oh, That's yeah. mainly advantages, but... Yeah, I because dwarves, for example, get advantage to avoid poison, I think, and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, that is an eight. An eight is not enough. You are taken by surprise. But, oh. Uh, uh... Oh, wait, no, the lucky... Ability only. They're a halfling, but lucky only. Oh, wait, nope. Lucky works for saving throws. So I'm going to re roll that. Was that a natural one? Because doesn't lucky only apply to natural ones? <laughs> I was going to say, it could only apply to natural Oh, wait. Ones. Oh, yeah, it only applies to a roll of one. My, yeah. My bad. Which okay. Would have been a saving throw. You weren't able to react. You fall into the mold. The mold does not deal the full damage because I've already written down what it deals. Um, it deals half, but of course you'd already taken half damage. Um, the previous character had already taken half damage from the fire. So you got one round to get to the end before you take I... the f- remaining half damage. <laughs> You are, I would say, a bit further than a normal sprint <laughs> to get to the end. So whatever you do now has got to be special. Okay, I'm just going to take a running jump. I'm going to just take a run 10 feet and then take a running jump. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to say you're going to need an athletics check to go far enough on this one. Okay, athletics. That's plus two again. Uh, that's a dirty 20. A dirty 20 is just enough. I was going to say any less, and you're going to find that Belladonna has closed the doors as you leap for them or something like that. <laughs> um, 20 is just enough, and you make it. You have taken half damage, though, which means you're in you know a much more perilous position than the others, but you are in another antechamber where you can rest, and you can take stock, and you can maybe have an argument, um, and, and in general, you know, prepare for the next room. Okay, uh, the Strangler makes eye contact with Blake, but Blake's just like... I think it was Belladonna this time. Oh! Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Stranglers, uh, obviously because they're sort of in the <clears> same <throat> party. <clears throat> oh, this will get Blake a lot easier as more people die yeah. anyway, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Blake just doesn't really care either way, and um, the Mime's probably uh, cut secretly hoping the rest of the party dies off so they can go <laughs> home. Okay. One room down. Um, I can tell you there are a total of four. Uh, and that was one of the harder rooms.